Our sermon text this morning is from Numbers chapter 6, beginning with verse 22, a very familiar blessing. We hear it at the end of many of our meetings, many of our Bible studies, at the end of maybe all of our church services, and you're going to hear it again today. This is what the Lord said to Moses. The Lord told Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons and to tell them to bless the Israelites with these words. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. In this way they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. The word of God. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It happened every time. As I sat next to a law enforcement officer on a four, five, six hour ride along, we would pull a car over. I did this for, I logged 50 hours last year when I was a police chaplain. And it happened every time when we were there parked behind a car. The officer would press his thumb against the back light. And finally, I asked one of the officers I was riding with, what is that? I've seen officers do that over and over again. Why do you guys put your thumb on the corner, the back corner of the car? And the officer said to me, I I don't really know. (laughs) It's something we do. I guess it might say, I was here. The officer pressed a small image that is not seen to the naked eye that says, I was here. And I thought about that, first of all, because the time is now short and we're making a, a service into a pretty, pretty long thing. And I want to fast forward a little bit into some important ideas. I don't have all the time to tell you about how Egyptian culture or Persians had different trinities that seemed to stream out of how the triune God presented himself from the very beginning. But we do have a blessing today that's not only threefold, like like these other hints in the Old Testament of what Jesus would say. There's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's holy, holy, holy. There is a God who said, let us create man in our own image. It wasn't that God was extremely high on himself, but that really there was three persons in one true God. But not only that, but he was going to press his name his threefold name, his blessings on all of his people. And this is the blessing that he chose to speak through his servant Aaron. In a time when Aaron was the chief pastor, director of all the worship, and his sons and his family would eventually follow in his footsteps. And over and over again, while they were worshiping in the desert in this tabernacle, when they set up the temple in Jerusalem, in the early ancient Christianity, Up to the present time, this blessing has been used to place God's print on the hearts of his people. So today we had a chance to really soak it in and really love this threefold blessing and really, really let it permeate our minds and hearts because maybe we don't always let it be what it is. Maybe we don't always listen to it very well because it's at the end of church and we're always so eager to go on with our day. The threefold blessing of God. Um, The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Um, And the first part of the blessing, just as there's three persons in, in one God, there's three sections to this blessing. The first part says, the Lord bless you and keep you. Now when this blessing was spoken to God's people, they were so obviously helpless They were out in the wilderness. They had just passed through the Red Sea. They had an enemy behind them. They had an enemy in front of them and to their flank. There were a lot of people who were called Canaanites, Edomites, Moabites, who weren't very interested in in other people coming in and crowding their space. They didn't have a whole lot. They didn't have land to grow food. They didn't have allies. And they certainly didn't have a claim among the people, 
They only had one claim, and it was the promise of God. They were so obviously helpless, they had no, no friends, no lifelines, no supply lines, except for one, and that was this friend and helper, God. They were totally dependent on him, and they knew it. He gave them manna from heaven. He gave them water from the rock. He gave them quail in the wind, and that was how he preserved his people. Without him, there was nothing else. And so the words of Aaron at the end of each church service were filled with meaning. As he lifted his hands and he said, the Lord bless you and keep you. <clears throat> um, to us, it's not always as obvious, is it? We have friends, <laughs> we have phones, we live in the middle of abundance, not desert. We live not abandoned, but together. Um, we live in a land of prosperity, at least people in our time in this place can certainly say that. And we have a God who constantly takes care of us, but how often do we take it for granted? Um, taking all of those things for granted, food, clothes, luxuries, automobiles, my goodness, my clothes are so comfortable, aren't yours? We have water, we have beer, we have soda, we have wine, and everything in between. And so often we don't give any thought to the God who gives it. And when we take those things for granted, guess who else we take for granted? We take for granted the God who makes the sun rise. The God who put physics and chemistry and everything in its place so that there would be wind that blows, so there would be crops that grow, so there would be shelves that are filled with food so that there would be money lining our pockets and so that we can go and purchase food without fear of a government who might say no, or without long lines, we even get to fill up our tanks without a question asked. We just insert a card, and there it is. It's like a miracle, only we'd never call it that, and oftentimes we don't think about that because we forget this blessing of our Lord God. And in the midst of all of our luxuries and abundance, we're surrounded with danger. We never know when we're going to be in a car wreck or break a bone or be diagnosed with something serious or dangerous. Some of us have issues with our nervous system. Some of us have arthritis. Some of us have family problems. Who knows what burdens you have that are so heavy to bear. And in the middle of all that, our Lord God says, as he has for thousands of years, through his pastor, the Lord bless you and keep you. This is our God. He provides for us. He protects us. He loves us. He takes care of us. He even puts his name on us. So he governs the heavenly bodies in the revolutions. He rides the wings of the wind. He clothes the lilies of the field, and he numbers the hairs on your head just to take care of you. And that wasn't it. Aaron goes on. The words of Moses to Aaron says, The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Now, neither Moses nor Aaron could say this in light of Israel's sins. They were already grumbling and complaining. And the Lord doesn't lighten up when he sees our dark hearts, when he sees our dirty hands and our filthy thoughts. Really, God should say, the Lord darken his face on you. He should say, the Lord turn away from you. May the Lord frown on you. He doesn't mistake us as perfect. And what do you think of yourself as you look at this week just past? As you consider your life since Easter, remember that joyous day of celebration when we heard about Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead for you, so that you could also be raised from the dead. And since then, we know our own hearts and how much we've still been sinning. Looking back reminds us of too many failures, too many deeds left undone, too many missteps, too many angry moments with our families. Too many lies, too many betrayals, too many secrets. Too many actions like this. And it, it really gets uncomfortable, even for Christians, when we look back at what we have done. It was just that uncomfortable for St. Paul when he said in Romans chapter 7, the good I would do, I don't do. The evil I don't want to do, this I keep on doing. Who is going to rescue me from this body of death? Spiritual warfare, brothers and sisters in Christ. And yet, feeling the weight of our sins is not altogether bad. Once upon a time, there was a preacher named Moody, and he was preaching about the, the weight of sins. And there was 
a drunk in the third row who piped up in the middle of the sermon and he said, Mr. Moody, I feel no weight on me. And the preacher said, the reason you don't feel any weight on you is because you're spiritually dead. Dead men feel no weight. To know, brothers and sisters, that we've been redeemed by Jesus Christ, to know that we're saved, it really is a great blessing to have weight, the weight of our own sins upon us as we come in here today. Because it proves we're not dead. Because God is here to come, comes to us with a message that says, whether dead or alive, it speaks to the coffin and it says, wake up and rise from your sins. They are forgiven. And the way that God told his, his family in the Old Testament was the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Because guess what? If the Lord's face is shining on you, your sins are removed. Your weight is gone. Everything dead has been released. And now you are, in God's eyes, a blessed and perfect, not a sinner anymore, but saint, through the lens of Christ. He saw the Old Testament believers already through the lens of Jesus Christ as he sees you today through the lens of Christ. So may the Lord trade everything we deserve with all of his perfection. May the Lord reconcile us by the death of Jesus Christ. May the Lord cause us to forget the sins of old and remember the perfection of new because now we're righteous in the eyes of God through Christ. And because of this trinity concept, really this trinity reality that God the Father looks at us through Jesus Christ at a heart that's been opened to God's grace and faith by the Holy Spirit, now you have something far more valuable than just a fingerprint on a taillight. You have the very name of God on you. Now, some of you might be thinking that may be true for many Christians, but it can't be true for me. I come in here with burdens, Pastor, that I couldn't bear to repeat and that my closest family and friends don't know. And yet, God continues and he says, the Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. To tell you that you are an individual part of his holy city. To say that you are a limb in the body of Christ. To say that you are a treasure that is not lost and know your sins aren't too deep for the Spirit to find them or for the Son to rescue them, you from them or for the Father to no longer look upon them. You've been reconciled and brought together with God after that separation called sin. We have peace that's a lot like the angels who sang to, to uh all the shepherds out in the fields, they sang glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. You have peace, like Jesus said. He said, my peace I give unto you, not like the world gives. I give you a different peace. And we have peace that St. Paul said in Romans chapter 5, since we have been justified by faith, that our sins are no longer ours, but on Jesus Christ. And because of that, they're gone. So it's peace that's rooted in the knowledge that Jesus Christ has made sinners one again with God. So today, what I want you to do, there's a little bit of a blank in your worship inserts in your bulletins. There's three blanks, in fact, for you to write three things down that, that you feel give you security and peace. You, you might not have something to write with now, but maybe later you can think about this. What are three things that make you feel secure? What are three things that give you peace? It might be police. It might be government. It might be insurance, your insurance policy. It might be your home. It might be your health. It might be your family. It might be any number of things. And as you write down those three things, or as you think of three things in your heart right now that, that give you peace, remember what God says in this threefold blessing, that nothing can give you greater peace than Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Whenever you hear this blessing, maybe you all, may you always remember that. Maybe you always remember your baptism. May you always remember that you are just like deacon today. Your sins washed away in the flood of Jesus Christ and the threefold blessing of God. Amen.